What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis, and today we are going to be showcasing how to beat the currently available Grandmaster Nightfall Exodus Crash as fast and easily as possible, by showcasing some incredible loadouts, one for each different class, as well as a bunch of tips for the strike itself. Exodus Crash has actually been gone for quite a while in the Nightfall rotation, but it's finally back with some changes, and this is the first time ever we are seeing the new version of Exodus Crash as a Grandmaster. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, it is double Nightfall rewards this week and increased Vanguard reputation. So, even though this week's Grandmaster isn't exactly a walk in the park, it is absolutely worth doing. Now, let's take a look at the important modifiers that are going to impact your loadouts. First of all, the champions are going to be Overload and Barrier. After that, it's an Arc Threat. And then moving on from there, we have Arc Surge as well as Solar Surge, and then finally Overcharged Rocket Launchers when it comes to damage increases. So, taking a look at the loadouts, Something unusual, I'm not playing a Titan, I'm actually playing a My Warlock here, and the build I'm using is going to be the unbelievably good Warlock Speaker's Sight healing build. I did a video on that linked right up above if you want more detail. I'm just going to be quickly going over the abilities, the fragments, as well as what I'm using for my armor mods, and of course you can pause the video and copy if you want to. But in terms of the weaponry guys, first of all, I'm using the Supremacy, an unbelievably good sniper rifle here, because now in Act 2, we have access to Snipe Rifle Anti-Barrier Rounds, so this was a fantastic addition. Then I am using the No Hesitation. Doesn't have any anti-champion properties, but this is going to let me heal my teammates and with the help of the Physic Perk, keep myself alive, perfect in my build. And then for my heavy, I'm actually using the Thunderlord. We have Arc Surge, and this actually has built-in overload rounds. So you can stun the overload champion super easy with this thing. And also the Thunderlord is good enough that as you can see, you can stun and finish them off with no problem. But moving on from there, for the Titan, we are going to be using the Consecration Prismatic Titan. Just did a video on that. Again, it is linked up above if you want more detail. This is a very, very powerful build, especially here in Act 2. And yeah, my teammate was using it to pretty darn good effect. It is a little bit risky to play because there's a lot of exploding shanks, but Consecration has a long enough uh, radius that you should be able to deal with that stuff without too much trouble. Now, in terms of the weaponry, Lingering Dread for not only a great blinding grenade launcher, but because it has chill clip, slowing will actually stun overload champions. After that, a great idea here, the Risk Runner Submachine Gun. This is going to actually give you arc damage resistance. There's a ton of arc damage in this Nightfall and it's arc threat, so a Risk Runner is really going to help your survivability. And remember, SMGs can actually break a barrier champion shields this season, so don't forget about that, guys. Moving on from there, we have an Avalanche uh, just as a good solar machine gun here. But moving on from there to the Hunter, we have the Prismatic Spirit of Liars plus Spirit of Caliban melee build, a fantastic build. Again, did a video on that linked right up above, guys, if you want more detail. Uh, again, this is super effective and has some incredible ad clearing capabilities. Now, in terms of the weaponry for the Hunter, first of all, we do have an out Outbreak Perfected, sorry. This is now craftable uh, as of the return of its exotic quest, and it's one of the best anti-barrier uh, pulse rifles you can possibly get because the nanites will break the barriers as well. Moving on from there, Indebted Kindness. Although this sidearm wasn't specifically stunning champions, the fact that it can get Volt Shot, remember, that can actually stun the Overload champions with the Jolt. And then lastly, guys, we have the Song of Iryut, again, just as a good machine gun for ad clearing. Now, yes, we have two people on melee builds in a Nightfall that is going to be throwing some exploding enemies and you can easily get overwhelmed if you're trying to get too crazy with the melee stuff, but that's why I'm on the Healing Warlock. I was able to heal the crap out of these guys 
while they're in danger by shooting them with my no hesitation by throwing those healing grenades and it was very effective. Now moving on from there to the tips for the strike itself. So you're going to start off in a different location actually in this cave. Just be aware that there's going to be enemies in this cave and immediately when you jump out you're greeted with a ton of enemies and a barrier champion. So don't try to run forward and just speed run in your sparrow. You will have to fight and kill these guys. After that, uh, just keep in mind there's going to be some adds as well as some explosives on the route as you go forward. But you can get in your sparrow and kind of skip this part. As you can see, head up to this man cannon and it will throw you on the far side of this cliffside here. From here, you're going to have to contend with a brig and a bunch of other enemies to make it past this barrier. Now, when you do make it past the barrier, guys, just a quick tip, shoot the darn trip mines before you go through. Everyone tries to just speed by them and in a Grandmaster, it's just not worth it. What are you gonna save 10 seconds? Do the careful approach, shoot them first. Now we then get to this section here and this one is a doozy. You have a plate you need to capture and while you're capturing this plate, a ton of enemies are going to spawn. Now, a couple of huge tips here. First of all, the actual percentage of the plate will only build while you're on it. So what that means is that when enemies spawn, everyone can get off the plate. You can deal with that wave of enemies and then no more enemies are going to be spawning until you get back on the plate. So use that to your advantage. Another big tip is that don't forget to go back here in the hallway you first entered this room from and back here you can really get a lot of distance between yourself and the enemies and then just kind of peek your head above the stairway to shoot the enemies slowly if you are in danger if one person is you know dead stuff like that. And frankly, while you're holding out here, you're gonna have champions, bosses are gonna spawn, all these enemies, but the one that's probably gonna give you the most trouble is the snipers. They are brutal, especially with an arc threat. Just keep in mind that they're going to spawn pretty consistently up in this top right corner. Make sure you have, you know, someone looking there every once in a while when a new wave of enemies spawn, make sure you take down that darn sniper as quickly as possible because that guy can get you when you're huddled behind some of the cover around this place. Plate. Additionally, again, we're running the healing warlock for a reason, constantly throwing those healing grenades, constantly using your healing rift as well as your super is going to be huge in keeping everyone alive when you're just being bombarded with a ton of enemies spawning. Moving on from there, however, uh, yeah, you can't get on your sparrow and skip this section like you used to. Instead, you are going to have to battle your way through uh, and get the three different arc charges to unlock uh, the Scorch Cannon. In the normal difficulties, you don't need all three arc charges. In Grandmaster, you do. And there's also going to be uh, some champions in this location as well. So again, this is just not a skippable zone anymore. You're going to have to play it like you do the rest of the Grandmaster. So once you grab that Scorch Cannon and use it to lower the next barrier, then you can skip forward a little bit here as you can see. But as you can also see, don't use the main road. Head up to the right instead because there are going to be some pikes that spawn right here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty annoying. But uh, aside from one ship that's going to come in and drop some guys behind you, you can hold up in this top like right hand corner and shoot down on the spider tank from relative safety. Just remember that you can also blow up the turrets of the ships that are above you as well. And if you don't, they can cause a lot of problems because they do arc damage. After that, you have another champion you have to kill here before you enter uh, into this next section. After that, you're going to fight your way through here and make it to the boss fight. Now, the boss fight in Exodus Crash is pretty notorious for having like no cover at all and enemies spawning all around you. Again, this is why we're running that healing warlock. After killing the first few enemies, I pop my well and we're able to have enough healing to tank uh, any incoming damage. We uh, damage the boss enough that he goes away. And also you can see like, I'm actually not focusing on the boss. I'm focusing on the exploding shanks. Having one guy just have laser vision for those shanks while the other uh, people are focusing on the boss is a great idea because those shanks can get right up next to you and kill you even in uh, a well, etc. So after that guys, you're gonna have a bunch of enemies spawn and you have to do an objective to get the boss back out. Now you can see I actually go to the side of the map that normally you hold out from and there's enemies spawning right on me. Now it's just a bunch of you know red bar fanatics is actually not that bad and I'm able to still hold out here 
but again like just the entire arena is filled with enemies there's really not much cover i think the best solution here and again is how we were able to beat it is just overheal right again use your warlock use healing invisibility with the melee builds and stuff like that to just be able to fight the adds while receiving so much healing that they're not able to kill you back now eventually you're going to have to take down two different uh i think yellow bar hydras to get the orbs keep in mind they might fall under the map like this uh, they'll just respawn if they do though and you deposit them in the two different locations and that's going to make the boss spawn again now really importantly during that whole part you are going to have some champions so before you summon the boss back kill the champions and then when the boss actually spawns for the last time no more champions will spawn so that means you can nuke the boss which is exactly what we did here i popped my well again we're able to overheal and the titan just popped his transcendence and spammed so many consecrations the boss was nuked that is the strategy you want to employ because there's, again there's going to be enemies spawning all around you let's make them all not matter kill the boss so fast the enemies don't even matter right and so guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.